Call the meeting to order. Roll call of Alderman. Heisler. Here. Kinsella. Here. Meyer. Here. Hall. Here. Anderson. Here. Rudwitz. Here. Carpenter. Here. Hart. Here. Silstein. Here. Hayes. Here. Seibert. Here. Martinson. Here. Elmore. Neider. Here. Musgrove. Here. Arlett. Here. Alderman Elmore is excused. Roll call of department heads. Please keep quiet. Chief Lansing. Here. Mike Flynn. Here. Kent Vaughn. Here. Royce Carlisle. Here. Jamie Matrix. Here. Tim Gregowitz. Here. Jim Schneider. Here. Leander Sherman. Here. Emily Foltz. Here. Chuck Schaefer. Here. Bob Sable. Bob Sable and Chief Clay are excused. Ladies and gentlemen, if you please stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We have no public hearing this evening, but I am going to uh, uh, use my discretion for just a minute uh, out of respect to a uh, presentation to our assistant fire chief, soon to retire, had ball game tickets. So uh, uh, we're going to hold public uh, participation for just a moment and ask Augie Werner and Chief uh, Likes to please come forward. states that is presented to August E. Warner Jr. in grateful appreciation for 26 plus years, 1986 to 2012, of dedicated service to the City of Belleville Fire Department, and most recently while serving as Assistant Fire Chief. Augie, we do appreciate it. Um, it's a lot of years. You and Scotty, I know, came on about the same time, and uh, it's a lot of service, a lot of dedication, and I know you got rolled out of bed a lot of nights since you've been Assistant Chief. Uh, uh, with all the extra duties that go along with that. But to your wife, Margie, and to your family, if we extend our thanks and wish you best. And I said, I wish I'd have been here today and a little uh, luncheon for you, but I had to see my daughter off to Germany. So uh, uh, we're just very appreciative of your time. Thank you. Chief, anyone say anything? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Kathleen Draper, I live at 500 South 19th Street, Belleville. 
Um, I'd like to quote um, Webster Dictionary at, under intimidated means made timid or frightened. I was addressed by the Balboa Police Department on Sunday evening because I drove through the neighborhood watch area and admired the job that um, Mr. Gregorowitz did on having it done on the alley between Madison and 20th uh, Roosevelt Street Avenue. And uh, we had some neighbors back there had some complaints because the alley was rutted up and was tearing up their cars. And I had spoke to Tim about it and questioned him. And I went through that alley on a neighborhood watch and admired the good job that they did, asphalted it and stuff. And two hours later, I get two big police officers in bulletproof vests that were more intimidating to my grandchildren than me. I mean, I've been disabled for nine years. Anybody who knows me, I've just been off of a walker for the last three months. I get the police to tell me that this strapping 20-year-old man says that I'm intimidating him by driving through the alley. Okay, I think that's a little uncalled for, and I don't know what his problem is, but now, according to the police department, I'm not allowed to go through the alley or go on Roosevelt. Now, I've lived on 19th Street for 56 years, and you're telling me that I can't go down a public street because someone is intimidated? This is crazy. Okay, I'm sorry, but this is crazy. And I don't know, and he told, the police told me, they said, well, if you continue to go down that way, then we're going to continue to come by here. If I'm so intimidated, and someone may think that my cane is intimidating, intimidating to anybody, then they wouldn't let me in a council meeting. If I don't have the cane, I can't walk. When I went past his house, I wasn't walking. I was inside my car with the windows rolled up. I haven't had a chance, I know you called the other day, and I haven't had a chance to talk to the chief or anybody about the whole situation, so we're not gonna resolve it tonight. I think you had a chance to, you had more than two minutes to give your to give your concerns. And you know, like I said, I, I can only ask when I see the chief tomorrow, so if you know. Well, the grandchildren were more intimidated, I can grant you. you know, you've been hurt, okay, thank you. Uh, you, right here, sir, you're first. Yeah. You're, yes, sir, right here, classes. Um, Hello, my name is Sean Woolwich. I live on 1009 Bell Valley Drive. Uh, I would just like to make aware of an issue that our street has with flooding. Um, each time it rains, the whole street becomes inundated with water. And uh, I just moved here recently from Carbondale, and the last couple times that it's rained, it's, it's been really bad. And apparently, from the story that I've gathered, is there are two separate owners for each property, and they're in dispute about the drainage system. So when this water accumulates, I mean, it, it gets to be about a foot deep. On my laptop, I have um, pictures of... Have you called City Hall before, though? I, I just, like I said, recently okay. moved here. This I, is your first attempt to notify us? Yes. Okay, yes, and yes. Tim, have you been aware of this address? No, I have not. Okay, uh, and, and the, Tim, can you write down the address? And maybe, maybe, uh, maybe you can write this, maybe you can step out with this gentleman a second and get his phone number. We'll yeah, I wasn't really sure what avenues yeah, to take, we'll, as I said, I just Tim's our city here. engineer, okay. and, and between him and our street department director, we'll, we'll talk about it tomorrow's staffing, okay. and then uh, we'll try to take a look at it. Um, but when we get your number, we're going to contact you. Um, sure. We'll certainly see. Sometimes there's some simple solutions. Sometimes they're very complex and cost a lot of money. But I'm not, that address does not stick in my mind as being one that comes to my office. You know, uh, yeah. Tom or when Tom I talked to the neighbors, they had all said, oh yeah, we've called, which I kind of was, yeah, I now, thought I'm they were kind of I'm not saying they have, right. I'm just saying I have not, it doesn't stick in my mind. Paul, you guys, does that sound like Anders, you guys have yeah. got? Sure. Okay, there's the two aldermen over there, okay. so. Well, I was talking to Talk to Tim, sure. and then we'll work from there. Okay, thank okay. you very much. Very good. Okay, the gentleman back here first, and then we'll go over to our other gentleman. Michael Hackberg, 701 Satterville. Um, it's been stated that the IEPA has uh, mandated Belleville separate the storm sewers from the sanitary sewers. Uh, $538 of TIF funds along with $268,000 of state grant money has almost completed the $806,000 East Washington Coupler. Question, 
Has the Master Sewer Project given you a date as to how soon the roadway on East Washington will be torn up to separate the storm sewer? Sir, we are, I think, Rice, where are you at here? You can jump in anytime you want, but we are separating storm sewers in most projects as we go. Our, um, our director and our consultant, our engineering firm, are advising us. In this particular case, <coughs> Tim, we are here too. Um, there was nothing in that project right there that was imminent that we could do that would make significant with other projects that are coming, right? Right. In order to separate it on East Washington, we would have to tie in every leg to um, the East Main. Right. So, so, so we, we evaluated it. All right. But, but when you look at the fact that most of the city has these now, we are, every time we do a street project, if we can possibly separate where we will make an impact, we are doing it. Fair to say, guys? Um, we, we've done it countlessly. That's but what but this particular one was evaluated and felt that uh, we couldn't get the bang for our buck uh, for this particular project. Okay, thank you. Uh, Bicentennial Park staging. We have some photos here. Uh, after many emails back and forth, I think we have the following facts correct. 17th Street Project is still using the park as a staging area, but no additional dirt will be dumped in the park. The contractor will soon place a silt barrier around the existing mound of dirt. Uh, the Parks Department is no longer dumping grass clippings and wood chips in the park. Wood chips will not be used on the Lindenwood running trails. Grass clippings and wood chips have been removed and, I hope, sent to the composting company. Streets Department has ceased dumping the street sweeper refuge in the park. This refuge is heavily laden with plastic bottles, you know, broken glass, rubber tire bits, oils, and hazardous materials. Um, and it, this has been removed from the park and sent to a landfill. Are these statements correct? Chuck, they are correct. Okay. The only time we had for very long at all, when we were shaking some things around, uh, when work was going on at the street department building and the new sanitation building was being built, we used the concrete pad out there at the, at the bicentennial for a short period of time before we could haul it to the dump. Is that correct? Correct. There was never anything hazardous out there. No. No. And it was never there for very long. It was a transfer point for a short period of time while we were putting in all the windows and all the insulation because we had to get everything away from the site and do a lot of things moving around at Ball Heights Road. And, and we were still, up until not that long ago, finishing the complete job with all the little ins and outs of finishing the sanitation building project. The street sweeper stuff is not considered hazardous where it's picked up off the roads and stuff? Not at all. Yeah. Okay. Um, on July 30th, Feldman Hayden requested a silt barrier be placed around the existing pile of dirt. To this day, there is no silt barrier installed. Last weekend's rain did a good job of uh, moving the dirt down the Hill creating a nice mudslide. There's photos well, here. It is on the list, Mr. Hagberg. Uh, I know Mr. Hayden did at that time mention it. Um, if somebody would have called back with, but you know, we, we we are down to the lowest number of street department employees we've ever had, with with more and more things to do each and every day. Um, I'm not making excuses, and I'm not saying the silt barrier shouldn't have put up, been put up yet. It will be put up. Obviously, a phone call or an email, Mr. Hayden, could have reminded uh, Chuck to possibly. Uh, I heard about this. Well, it was talked. It was talked about in the meeting, but maybe you weren't even here that day. Sometimes things do slip through the cracks. There's a lot of work on everybody's plate, and when we don't follow up with communications that may bother you, then sometimes we can forget. Seems like I did hear it, but I didn't know that you guys didn't connect. We'll work on it. But like I said, these guys, these guys are out there. They were out there in preparation for the heavy rain this past weekend, cleaning catch bases and trying to get things done. We're trying to prepare downtown for all the festivals this fall, just like we do in the spring. We've been, you know, they've been going great guns. And uh, like well, I said, I'm saying six weeks ago it was talked about and never done. And now we had heavy rains this weekend, and it really created quite a mess out there. And all I can say is uh, I apologize for that, and we'll certainly get off. Yeah. The other thing that was discussed was that the area would no longer be used as a staging area. No, 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 that's, that's not true. We said, we explained, if I'm not mistaken, and Tim jumped in here. We're saving the city's money, right, Tim? 
by staging some of that dirt, that, that dirt that is up top, within a week should all be moved out of there and down to the bottom. To buy and, and by doing that, we didn't have to purchase extra dirt, right? Right. So we actually saved the taxpayers some money. So we never, we never said that we're, you know, we're trying to be frugal in our in our decisions here. Well, in an email from Debbie Belleville, she said that the area was no longer going to be used as a staging area. And I bring that up because this last week, this pile about 200 feet away has shown up. Uh, new piles and stuff. Looks like it's from the Kimball Plaza, which it probably is. Mr. Hayberger, are you getting complaints on this yourself, or Joe? Are you getting complaints about this? I mean, because you don't live right there, do you? No, I don't. I, I mean, I was wondering, it's like, why you are, I mean, this new pile appears with no silt around, silt area around it either, and it's just like, there are rules to be followed, and they're not being followed. Well, we're, we will we will certainly address that with the staff tomorrow, staff meeting. You, you, your list about to complete for today? Uh, one more item, if you don't mind. Uh, I'll make it quick. The dog park. We talked about putting up signs for the dog park, saying it was a proposed dog park site. Your signs up. Well, what actually showed up is this. Future dog park site. Well, it's a proposed future dog park site. Well, then say proposed dog park site. You're not asking the public's input on this. You're saying this is where the dog park is going to go. That, you know, it's just when you do things like that, it just makes me wonder. It's just like, you know, why don't you want the public's input on it? Jim, do you, do you, do you have an answer for that? You can change it. That's fine. Okay. Uh, public service announcement. The hazardous waste that we talked about, I think upstairs last time, is open. The one in Swansea is open to all Illinois residents. Right. So that anybody that has household waste could uh, bring it up there on the 16th. That's correct. Thank you. Anyone, yes, in the back of the room. festivals in the fall, I got a feeling we're going to be looking at that Meredith home for another year because uh, we don't want to have a huge construct teardown in the middle of the festival. And uh, just as what Kathy uh, was saying about the police, um, and I said last month, our last meeting, that there's a dope house, welfare fraud, prostitution pimping and a, and a pedophile living right next to a grade school, Franklin School. And one of them females at Franklin, uh, next to Franklin School, who I uh, used to do a little work at my house until I found out what kind of person she was. I, well, I bought her $70 and when she didn't want to pay, all of a sudden there's two star troopers down at my house dragged me down to the police station and said I was accused of stealing her link card. I didn't steal her link card. She owed me $70. Stuart, Stuart, I'm sorry. We have heard this story I don't know how, how many times. So, you know, I would suggest it. You talk to the Belleville Police if that doesn't work. You might want to go across the street and, and try to make an appointment with the state's attorney. I don't know what else to tell you, but we've heard this story about the late card and this young lady and this, this endeavor. I, I know I've heard it in this, in this chamber is probably at least six to eight times, minimum. Well, so I, there's nothing else we can do about that. But that's the way the liberals operate. They'll repeat a news story 20 times uh, if it affects a, a conservative, and then they'll run it one time for a Democrat. Oh, we covered that. But a conservative, they'll ever run that story 20 times. But anyway, the police drug me out of my house two times at home on account of this lying female. Twice I was drunk out of a city hall meeting on account of this lying female. And I took her to small claims court and got a $206 judgment on the $70 she owed me. And uh, so I just think the police are seem to believe everything she says, drag a tax-paying, law-abiding citizen basically out of a city hall meeting twice, drag a person out of their house twice down to the police station. Thank you. Anyone else to see? <coughs> Hearing none, I will close public participation.
We will now move in. We've already had a presentation to the Aldi Warner. Uh, Jim Schneider, would you like to come forward and uh, uh, bring us a little information about our character word of the world? I was asked this evening to say a few words about this month's character word, which happens to be respect, which means, of course, to show regard for self, others, property, and persons of authority. We come here with a lot of mutual purposes. Since I'm talking about respect, I might start by saying we are all human beings who matter. We live in the same town, we are impacted by the same issues, and we share much mutual purpose. We're here to solve the same problems. We're here to make all better. Mutual purpose, I would submit, is served most effectively when there's also mutual respect. Why? Because when you take away respect, it's a little bit like air, in the sense that if you take away, take it away, it's all we think about. When there is perceived disrespect, especially pervasive disrespect, the conversation is no longer about the issues at hand, about the original purpose, about our ability to solve problems, mutual purpose. It becomes about defending dignity. With respect, however, especially pervasive respect, that can be like a magical appointment to any kind of a group. Disagreement, which is obviously an essential part of any group process, can become the sharing of perspectives. The people in the room, when they can take their focus off of personalities and indignities, can get about the business of mutual purpose. How do you do that when there's great differences in thinking? Well, perhaps by dwelling less on the differences and dwelling more on the mutual purpose. A very wise man once suggested that it begins with our own heart. It begins with our own habits of looking at each other as people who matter. <laughs> yes, he gave us a hint of how to do that in the form of a prayer. Please, Lord, help me forgive those who sin differently than I. Respect, character, and thank you very much. <laughs> to the regular portion of the meeting. We have the minutes of the regular city council meeting held on August 20th, 2012. What's your pleasure? John, I'd like to make a motion to approve and file the minutes of the meeting. Motion by Alderman Heisler, second by Alderman Kinsella. Is there any addition to correction to these minutes? Hearing none, all in favor of this motion signify by saying aye. 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 I close. The motion carries. Claims payroll and disbursements. Yes, Your Honor, I move they have the claims payroll and disbursements to be paid. Motion by Alderman second Houston, order. second by Alderman Heisler. Do I hear any discussion there? Roll call. Heisler. Aye. Kinsella. Aye. Meyer. Aye. Holt. Aye. Anderson. Aye. Rudgewitz. Aye. Carpenter. Aye. Hart. Aye. Silsby. Aye. Hayden. Aye. Seibert. Aye. Martinson. Aye. Schneider. Aye. Musgrove. Aye. Arlen. Aye. Motion carries. Uh, reports. Only Board of Appeals advisory reports. Page 2 uh, request an area of local variance in order to build a 1,955 square foot duplex on a vacant lot that is only approximately a 7,491 square feet in the area on North 12th Street in an A2 family residential district. Uh, the zoning board recommended by a majority vote that it be approved. Your Honor, um, actually, when I was at the zoning meeting, and we did not have a site plan that included driveways as per our ordinances. We just received that site plan on our desk tonight. I'd like to make a motion to table this to review that a little bit further and make sure that there's actually not room for all that on that particular lot. Motion by Alderman Meyer to table. Do I hear a second? Who's Alderman Holt? Second by Alderman Holt. <coughs> discussion. I do have a discussion about this case specifically, but about some others. Um, I regret I was not able to attend only because I was out of town. However, I noticed that we already had the ordinance written for this one, 
which I thought our policy was when there is a mixed vote coming out of zoning, we do not prepare the ordinance in advance. Um, I think if it was a denied yeah, that is simply our policy, and that's, that's an oversight on my part. I apologize. I, I, Twice tonight? No, I believe there were. On this case, case 53, and also on case 55. So either we have a standard policy or we don't. Well, I think she just apologized. Yeah, case 55, we don't have an ordinance on for this one. Must have been an oversight. I apologize. Okay. Um, Okay, thank you. Okay, so, <coughs> yes, sir. Um, is, is this not the revised site plan you said he was going to submit? It is. It was placed on the desk tonight. And what's the problem? I want to look at it a little more. It's my part. Is this, and I'm concerned about it. Is this not the design? That is what was submitted this afternoon, and that's what I placed on the desk. And I have none of this attention to submit it. Okay. Could you, I, I know there's a plat number. Could you give us a street number? Um, yeah, it's about three houses. Um, it's on the west side of North 12th Street, about three lots south of D. Okay. Yeah, that's, that's pretty accurate. Okay, uh, we have a motion, we have a second to table this. Uh, all in favor of tabling signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Motion carries. Uh, any law request a sign installation for area of special control? Motion by Alderman Meyer, do I hear a second? Second. Second by Alderman Kinsella, do I hear discussion? Is this discussion? Yes, sir. Emily, did she just not understand she had to have a permit? I think that's probably the case. There's a lot of signs downtown that, you know, every little... Do, do we need to do something to let the we need to, we, need, I mean, we agree, we need to look at it. Because yes. if you look at it in, 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 in great depth, Every store opener that puts an open sign in their window probably right. technically should get. So we, well, I mean, yeah, and then these neon signs that are there for open and close. So we probably do need to look at it. It's a small sign that uh, technically you were right when you that we had a concern, but it's it's a small sign. It's about the size. Of the I just want to be fair, but I'm afraid because well, we do have new merchants, not everybody understands what the ordinance is. And, and we have uh, certainly, you know, we have been been particularly about getting. Windows painted, awnings, and the bigger signs, we have made sure that they've all followed. The smaller signs, uh, we have we have not held everybody's feet to the fire because I do think we probably need to, when we get a free moment, probably look at that and revise it. It's, well, it's, I, I want to just educate people. That's what I'm looking at. Not necessarily We're educated anything. tonight, so we got a motion and we got a second, right? To approve this. Anything else? All in favor of approving. Case number 54, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Jill and Daryl Richardson uh, request a use, a use variance in order to operate a used car dealership for 30 to 40 cars at 8330 West State Route 15 in an 81 single family residential zoning district. And the recommendation uh, by the zoning board was to deny. We hear a motion. Your Honor, uh, I would like to make a motion to deny the petition uh, for an unattended storage used car lot uh, on an A1 single family, a single family area. We have a motion by Alderman Musgrove. Do I hear a second? I'll second. Second by Alderman Parlett. Do we hear any discussion? Could somebody explain the difference between the Richardsons and Mr. Ruin? Who owns this? Who's going to run it? You want to explain that? Go ahead. Yeah. <clears throat> the Richardson's are my cousins, and I, I'd be the one running it. And it, it wouldn't be unattended. It, I have another spot within a, not even a mile from where this one is, and it's in the county. And I already have it ready for inspection, but I don't want to get it inspected if I can't get this one because the one down the road, I mean, it'll only hold like 10 or 15 cars. And I mean, at the volume of cars I can buy, I, it, it would be pointless. So that's why I was hoping this one would get passed and it won't be unattended. I mean, they, they live right behind where it's at. And there's a tavern right here, and there's a church right here, and there's a gas station, and it's right at a four-way stop. I mean, it, I would turn 40 cars a month out of there, no doubt. And I mean, that's why I'm trying to get it passed. How 
How big is this lot? How many cars could be? Uh, uh, 30 to 40. It's 100 by 100 is what we're going to blacktop. And I mean, I've already talked to a guy about blacktop, and we've already paid money to clear the lot off just so you guys can get an idea of what I want to do. And I didn't want to go and spend another $30,000 on blacktop if it's not going to get fast. Uh, Mr. Ruman, uh, how long have you been in business? So long on uh, I've been all my life. I mean, I just opened my own lot last year, but I've been partners with guys for about 14 to 15 years. I buy out all the all, every new car store in Belleville, I buy all their trades. Yeah, I, I thought maybe your family was involved in the car business for a long time. Yes. Father, so yeah, I was kind of born into it. I didn't really have a choice about it. I, I support. I mean, this is small business. You know, bringing a little bit of revenue in the city. Okay. I'd be see, this is a problem. This is where I was sort of outskirt of town. So, follow me, Steiner. Well, right now, I just, I would have one guy. But you will have some. Yes, ma'am, yes. Well, they, do, they won't be able to do any mechanic work. No, I'm not doing no mechanic work. I'm just, I'm just strictly selling the cars, yeah. But I do have shops that I use, and that's who I take my people to, and they'll get the same discounts I get. Yes, ma'am, I'll let you I'm Jill Richardson. I'm the property owner. Um, I live at 8420 Highway 15. I own... All the property along Highway 15, from the EJ Motel to my house, and also the lot right next door to where we're wanting to put this. And we've spoken to the Cat and the Fiddle, we've spoken to the church. Nobody is objecting. I'm not objecting because I'm the connecting property owner. So, you know, we're just wanting to bring some business to our end of town. You know, I mean, besides residential. Yes, sir. The lot is in the city limits of Belleville, but your office is outside of the city limits of Belleville? Yeah, uh, well, it's kind of weird where the lot's at. I mean, it's, everything else is county there except for that lot. It, I, I mean, yeah. So technically, when you sell a car, are you selling a car, a car inside the city limits of Belleville or outside the city limits of Belleville? Well, I can, I can get an address right there and it would be wrote up in the city. And if I sold one at the other spot, then I guess They'd be right up in the county. I mean, they're a mile apart from each other. Is, is the county still considered? Yeah. No. If you're in two different jurisdictions, and I see his point. But, it's, but it is really, it is peculiar there. The cat fills in the county. Uh, you're, this proposed lot is in the city limits. Yes. I, I think one of the biggest the things that... The, about the, the sales tax? The sales tax, if, it's, if he sells off this lot here, it goes to the city. Yeah. But how would we know? Well, I would, just every car that came off of there, and almost every car will come off of that lot because eventually I'll just move them to that one. I mean, I'll write it up with that address with the city, and, you know, I, I'll have two separate tax forms, I guess, is what I'll have to order, one for that lot with that address and one for the one that's down the road. Here's a, a thought, folks. Um, I think one of the concerns that I heard was that there was going to be, it was more or less going to be storage. Right, Mr. Buster, we talked and, and, and that, that's, you know, I think you're answering some of that question. Yes. Uh, I, what I would propose, since you've enlightened us a little bit here tonight, and you admitted you weren't at the zoning board, yeah, I, was... uh, I think there's a few more questions that need to be, I, I would maybe ask before we put this to a vote and possibly see it turned down as the zoning board did, that maybe we would table this for two weeks and, and, and sit back down and explain. Because I have a few concerns about you know, it's one thing to sell cars there, but are we going to be storage cars for how long that are going to be, maybe become derelict vehicles? I, I'm just saying, okay. I think we need a few more parameters to be, to be spelled out before we would do that, because we, we've got to, as much as you're saying, and I'd kind of like to see the letter from the church, or this buddy, and I know you're one of the buddy property owners, so that yes. just stand that you're here to speak to us. Yes. Those are concerns that always okay. face us. What do the immediate neighbors feel? What impacts them in a positive or negative way? And, and you know we're certainly not against sales tax. We're certainly not against selling cars in Belva. But I think there's a few things that you didn't get a chance to explain. And, and maybe by tabling this two weeks, maybe you could do a little better job of, of, of convincing this group that that there, this is still a worthwhile adventure. Can I say? I mean, if, if this spot goes good, he's got plenty of property back there where a building could be built, and it would go over very nice and it'd stay in the city. And 
right now I buy, I have a permit from Secretary of State because he owns the property that's in the county and I put one car there and I probably sell 25 to 30 of them a month. This would not be a storage lot for derelict vehicles. If I'm not turning my money, I'm not staying in business. So, I mean, I can promise you these cars won't sit there. You'll see different cars constantly. I just want to clarify one thing. Um, there's only for, this is, there's not going to be anybody on site. You just said there was going to be somebody there to sell the cars. They won't be at the lot, right? There'll be a phone call to another location. Yeah, but I mean, they're right down the road. I mean, with that phone. There's nobody on site is my question. No, but I've already been selling so many cars out there. I got word of mouth. I mean, people call me constantly and it would, it would benefit everybody. I, if it didn't, you could just tell me to close it down. My question has been answered. It's about okay. safety tax. Okay. I have a question about notification. Did we have our zoning sign posted on this property? Yes. Okay. yes. And did we, even though the neighboring properties were not in Belleville, did we send them the letters? Yes, I did okay. all that. And, and it's true that there were no objectors? No. no one's going to be. Have you heard from any other property owners? I've actually talked to them. I've knocked on some of their doors. Okay. The ones that I didn't already know. I grew up in the neighborhood. I mean, everybody around here knows. Everybody around there knows me. Okay. So your proposal is take Well, I just think there's a couple of things yet I'd like to. I mean, we're, we're getting some of the questions answered here tonight. And I think the fact that he wasn't at the zoning board certainly was, you know, unfortunate for him. But I, I think two weeks might make a difference on kind of putting the a few more questions answered, resolved. And then maybe we can take a look at it. Nice. It, it's hard because it's a vacant lot. I mean, I know it's hard to imagine it right now, but if it goes good, I mean, I can put a building there next year, no problem. If it goes over good, or if I don't get a chance to even try it, I mean, you know. I do have a question. Yes. If, if we postpone this for two weeks and, and consider it with your office building being adjacent to the parking lot in the county, would you be willing to consider adding some that into the city? Yeah. You're almost a mile. You're not, you're not right there. Yeah, I'm, I'm actually right past McDonald's and Kmart on... There's no way that that can be annexed. No. We'd have to look at it. I don't yeah. think I mean, it's not my head. I don't think it's well, I'm sure they would give me, I could, Secretary of State, if I talk to them, I mean, I'm sure that Illinois would give me two different tax forms with the addresses that were... That was one of my questions yeah. that we can look at. I'm sure I can look into that. Mr. Musgrove, would you consider uh, amending your motion to table it for two weeks? Okay, I'll amend the motion, or I'll just change the motion to uh, table this for two weeks. Mr. Arlen, acceptable. So at, at this point in time, we have a motion to uh, table this uh, recommendation uh, for two weeks that we can obtain a little bit more information. Maybe you can come in, sit down with Emily and I, and talk a little bit, and, and then. Uh, See if we can't answer a few more questions. Okay? Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, everybody's okay with that? All in favor of the motion to table for two weeks, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Any objection to reading the next screen as a group since they all apply to the same person? No, I think it was only direct. That was unanimously approved. Okay. Proceed. Uh, for uh, a little bit, we're requesting three zones for the property at 122 and Street Avenue. From C2 Heavy Commercial District to the P1 Single Family Residential District. Uh, next, requesting rezoning of the property at 120 of School Avenue from C2 Heavy Commercial District to A1 Single Family Residential District. And three, requesting rezoning of the property at 116 of School Avenue from C2 Heavy Commercial District to the A1 Single Family Residential District. All three of those are recommended unanimously. Motion by Ms. Seibert, second by Alderman Martinson, to approve case number 56, 57, and 58 and have the proper ordinances drawn. Discussion? Yes, ma'am. Can I ask where exactly was this going to happen? What businesses or what this was? What was the question? Where, where exactly is this at, Kurt? I'm sorry? She, she wanted to know where exactly it's at. Um, the chiropractor is on the uh, north end of um, Mascuda Avenue. It's the second block of Mascuda Avenue from Bay Street. And there's a, so it's chiropractor. There's Charlie's. Um, Charlie's is on the south side. Uh, and, and it's on the east side of the street. It's, it's between them. Oh, so, okay. So it's in between Charlie's and oh. it's the three properties between Charlie's and Bay Street. Actually, two properties, well, three properties between Charlie's and Bay Street. The Washington. Uh, 
house, um, the historical house. Um, yeah. 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 It's right before this. Correct. It's right before Charles. It's, it's, it's in between Charles and the motorcycle shop, actually. Yeah. Okay. Okay. We have a motion to approve the recommendations uh, forwarded to us by the Zoning Board and the proper ordinances drawn for those three cases. Any other discussion? All in favor of the motion, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Motion carries. Or reports. Alderman Anderson. Yes, Your Honor, on behalf of the Mass Historic Committee, I'd like to make a motion to approve the long term control plan construction pay request number 26 from Court and Lab John to Mill Way Merchant for the total amount of $1,210,948. 32 cents and I say Second, ma'am. We have a motion for Alderman Anderson, second, ma'am, and three to approve that the pay request for the uh, project going on the ways of our treatment. Discussion? Roll call. Heisler. Aye. Kinsella. Aye. Meyer. Aye. Holt. Aye. Anderson. Aye. Rudgewood. Aye. Carpenter. Aye. Hart. Aye. Selsey. Aye. Hayden. Aye. Cyber. Aye. Martinson. Aye. Schneider. Aye. Musgrove. Aye. Carlo. Aye. Motion carries. Uh, motion to approve a street banner permit request for advertising the barbershop and concert to be held October 27, 2012 at the North Illinois Streetscape <coughs> entrance to the city. Okay. Motion by Alderman Silsby, second by Alderman Meyer. All in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Solicitor's license request. Kyle R. Bostic to sell products from our Jarvis Exterior. Zachary M. Winkler, Winkler uh, Hamilton to sell products for Jarvis Exteriors and Joe, Joe Mo Kim to sell products for American Development Home. Right. Yes. Can we remove one individual from this? Because I have concerns about this uh, person who's been Okay, which one would you like to remove? Kyle Boston. Okay, so we have a request to strike him from the list tonight. Um, and and, uh, and do we have a motion yet? We haven't got a motion yet. So you want to make a motion with uh, approving the other two? Is that what you're saying? Correct. So there's a motion by Alderman Hart to approve the second two, Zachary and Joe Mo Kim. Uh, to, and, you, and Alderman Kinsilla seconds that with the striking Kyle Bostic. Uh, Regarding, I have not, I don't have this in front of me, but regarding concerns with the background. We have a motion to second. Do we have any further discussion? All in favor of the motion as spelled out by Alderman Hart and uh, uh, Kinsella signified by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. We're moving on. Motion to approve the use of City Hall, the lobby for gingerbread cookie walk on Saturday, December 8, 2012, from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. This is about the third year we've done this now for. Uh, do I hear a motion? Motion, motion by Alderman Meyer, second by Alderman Cyber. Any discussion? This is where you just set the tables and four people drop off. Right. And they're, but they're walking the, the, trek or do this. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Ye
going to have to, to keep our safer grant requirements. Uh, uh, Assistant Chief Werner does not officially retire until Friday, so we can't take any action until after Friday, officially. You know, you can't hire somebody before that, before there's a vacancy created. If he were to at the last minute change his mind, we would be going over the budget by actually having an extra person. So we're just kind of getting ourselves set up, right, Chief? Right. So that we can move forward as expeditiously as possible. Uh, and that's what we're trying to do here. So we have a motion and we have a second. Yes. In, in essence, we're basically just stating we're going to move forward, keeping the same fill, amount of fill, fill, fill in the position and keeping the same amount of fire that we have, which is really what we already committed to with the Safer Grant a couple years ago. We have a motion and a second to fill this, give them authority to fill this position. Roll call. Aye. 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 Meyer. Aye. Bolt. Aye. Anderson. Aye. Graduates. Aye. Carpenter. Aye. Hart. Aye. Silsby. Aye. Hayes. Aye. Seibert. Aye. Martinson. Aye. Schneider. Aye. Musgrove. Aye. Arlington. Aye. Motion carries. Communications. We have anything else? This is for Mrs. Fields. Forget your name. I was calling Mrs. Fields. Boy. Uh, this time there's no petitions, there's no resolutions. Ordinances, I ask for a motion to read by title only. Ordinances number 7623, 7624, 7625, 7626, 7627, 7628, 7629, and 7630, and 7631. Motion by Alderman Silsby to Second. read those ordinances by title only. Second by Alderman Heisler. Discussion. What about the 7626? That was tabled. Correct. We, we, we will table that one. I'm sorry. You're correct. So this would be 7626 is tabled. I made a mistake. Um, everybody, we got a motion to read by title only from Alderman Silsby. We had a second by Alderman Heisler. And uh, no, other, no other questions besides other than the fact of eliminating <coughs> 7626. We also. What's the other one? Yeah, 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 yeah. That one didn't have an okay. Didn't have an ordinance, that's right. We weren't our favor. Okay, so we, uh, all in favor of the motion to read by title only those ordinances as just stated, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Count these read one by one, or as a group, or partial? As a group. As a group, I hear no objection. Please okay. proceed. Ordinance number 7623. Ordinance amending chapter 52 of traffic for the revised ordinances of the city of Illinois as amended by amending portions of sections thereof. Ordinance number 7624. An ordinance amending chapter 52 of traffic for the revised ordinance of the city of Illinois as amended by amending portions of sections thereof. Ordinance number 7625. An ordinance vacating the drainage and utility easement on lot 228 of Woodbridge Estate, 10th edition. Ordinance number 7627. No, that's the No, 26 is 10. 10. 26. 26 is 10. So I'm 7627. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it is confusing. I understand. A zoning ordinance regarding case 54, August 12, Patty Law. Ordinance number 7628. There's only ordinance uh, regarding well, all of these, uh, Kurt uh, Lubin, uh, ordinance number 7629, and the 7630 are uh, the Kurt Lubin ordinances uh, uh, for the various places on the Muscat Avenue. And uh, ordinance number 7631, an ordinance approving the final plan for single person. Motion to approve ordinance 7623, 7624, 7625, 7627, 7628, 7639, 7630, 7631. Motion by Alderman Silvio, do I hear a second? Second, Second, by Alderman Heisler to approve those ordinances as just stated and, and read. Discussion? Yes. I, I got a question from the citizen. I just want to make sure that I gave the correct answer the way I understand. In relation to ordinance 7625, the, the city is just vacating part of an easement, which is a right of access. So that the people that own that lot, basically they still own the lot. We're just 
yielding part of an easement that, that they technically could use because of, of, of the easement that we don't need. And, and that was a question that I got. Correct. It's a drainage utility easement. So basically, the utility companies have given up their access to that particular portion of the easement. Um, the underlying property owners still own the land. Right. The question was, why are we giving this land up? And I told them we're not giving any of the land up. We don't own the land. And we're actually allowing the person that owns the land to use the land in the right. most prudent way. Thanks. Exactly. We have a motion and we have a second round for all these ordinances. Is there any further questions? Hearing none, I'd ask for a roll call vote. Heisler. Aye. Kinsella. Aye. Meyer. Aye. Holt. Aye. Anderson. Aye. Rudgewood. Aye. Carpenter. Aye. Hart. Aye. Silsby. Aye. Hayden. Aye. Seidman. Aye. Martinson. Aye. Snyder. Aye. Musgrove. Aye. Arlen. Aye. Motion carries. We have uh, miscellaneous and new business. Yes, ma'am. Can we go back to the discussion about the street department and their lists of priorities and things getting cleaned and things not getting cleaned? How, how often is that updated? Who is in charge of that? The director of the street department is in charge. Okay. How, then how did we miss, you know, we're not going to dump here, we're not, how did that happen? Which, which when Mr. Happen? Hadbert was speaking during public participation and brought up a couple of issues, um, well, first of all, that was at a public meeting, and I don't think, if I'm not mistaken, I don't know that Mr. Schneider, Mr. Schaefer was here that particular night. And I guess, for whatever reason, um, you know, normally we're pretty good about whatever happens here, we take the staff meetings next day. Because okay. I purposely have staff meeting always, the, the, the total staff, always the night, the morning after a city council meeting. That seems to be the most efficient way to not let things drop, drop through the cracks. And all in all, over the last eight years, soon to be eight years that I've been there, um, we've been pretty good about that. We, we must have missed this one. And like I said, um, tomorrow's staff meeting, I can guarantee you, Tim and I and Chuck will have a talk about it, as I still explained. Okay. Uh, you know, because it, it had been requested this silt barrier on the 30th of July, and here we are already in September. Well, I would just say, if somebody went back out there and saw it wasn't up, it wasn't concerned to somebody, as many emails and many well, more emails and phone calls because very few people pick up the phone and talk to anybody anymore. It's all about emails. It, it, as many as I get, and the staff gets, I don't recall getting an email since that since we talked about it. So you didn't have to have an all of requested. I understand, but but we are human, and you know we we have a lot of work on these people's plates, and they do a great job. And I'm just saying it was a mistake. I apologize. Chuck and I and Tim will talk about it tomorrow. I don't know how much more I can beat no, this I'm up. I'm just asking you how the system works. How well, the system the system us. normally is very good about business that's transpired here between Mrs. Fields' notes and between the staff being here. And that's why I ask the staff to be present at every council meeting so that they can pick up on currently this time. But I do know that was probably a night that Chuck was actually here. It wasn't here. Okay. And okay. It, it was just dropped. Okay, okay. on a related note. I understood when we started talking about moving the dog park, and I think it was Alderman Heisler that asked me to put the signs up. I, in my mind at least, it was clear we were putting up the zoning signs, just like we do on other properties. I don't understand how it got to be Jim, a printed sign, this is where it's going. No, but Jim, what, didn't we go back, what was the vote a meeting ago? To change the consideration of the dog park to Rotary, right? Yes. That was the motion that we passed here in this council, right? But it was with the understanding that we post on the property that that was being considered. And no. apparently that didn't happen, so nobody had a chance to object. But, but I mean, it, it's, you know what, we've not constructed anything new there yet. I guess if, you know, if, if um, I, I have not gotten one call from anyone, you, Jim, about any objections thus far. And the science, maybe, maybe the sign doesn't have the word consider in front of future. Uh, I, I, I want to know who authorized printing the sign. Well, I think the request was here on this move, meeting that we no, said. the request here was to put the zoning sign on. Put, you know, it was a standard thing. Just, but you, we don't have to put zoning, do we? We need to go check the zoning on that property, but I believe it's on it's a part. A2, two family, which uh, permitted use of the park in that I don't think zoning was ever the question all the whole. I, I think that we agreed I think we agreed to post that the consideration was going up for this to be the future site to make sure that no one could come back and say, I mean, especially neighbors, that we didn't know what was going on. 
And, it, and it's not a done deal yet, I guess it's fair to say. We don't have the money yet. We haven't taken a vote on taking any action other than that vote we took to consider moving it to this location. So I mean, it's, and I, don't, and I will double check tomorrow, but Mike, I'm not trying to put you on the spot, but I don't think there's a zoning change that we have to do. I think it's about once we get the funding and we can afford to do it, the vote will come to this council before we take action to, to build anything in that park, including fence up, to spend the money that, that you know that we have either uh, already donated or what they continue to raise through grants, etc. Okay, and I'm, I'm not saying it was a zoning issue. I'm saying it was my understanding that was the type of sign we were putting up to alert the public they had an opportunity to speak about it. And I don't think the sign that was put up gives that idea. Well, this, okay, obviously the sign that put up doesn't quite meet your approval. But I will say this, the sign's been up for what, Jim, a week or so? I'm not sure. But, but more than just a day or two. But my point is, I have not heard from anybody that it's been distasteful or concerning or alarming to anyone. Nobody, to my knowledge, nobody's called my office or your office saying they had heartburn over this. And that was the whole purpose of getting some kind of sign up to get feedback. Now, the sign may not be perfectly written, but the sign is doing its job in that I saw it up there today when I drove by or yesterday over the weekend when I was out looking at things. I saw the sign there and I thought, well, that's good. We put it up to alert the neighbors that there is a dialogue or there is a plan being considered uh, to put the dog park here. But you know, there's nobody that's been jumping up and down saying that's a bad thought, bad, you know, and we're not ready to act yet, so, I mean, whether we spend any money to revamp the signs or not, I think the signs, the fact that they're up, there's a sign up, and the fact that we're, we did go around even knocked on doors and gave flyers to some of the neighbors. Some folks have talked to some of the neighbors. Yeah, so I mean, I think we're trying to make sure everybody's inclusive here. Yes, sir? Two, two points, so one on, on the, on the First part, uh, you asked during the public portion why I didn't follow up. I wasn't aware until just recently that I needed to follow up. Well, I just say it, it, it was a mistake. I I, I, no, I, 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 I 30 understand. days passed and we missed something. I, I, you know, I'm not I said it coming to a council just... meeting. All I'm saying is a phone call or an email probably would have got it done today or last week. I mean, we dropped the ball on that one. I, I, right. You, you, you just made a comment. That I didn't follow up. I wasn't aware that there was something for you to follow up. I just wanted to point that out. On, on the dog park, it was because I'm the one that amended the motion. The, the motion was to put a sign up that said proposed. That's what we wanted. <clears throat> it, it, it's a question of semantics, but I, I do understand where if you're saying future site, that somebody could look at that and say, well, that means it's already done. Well, and, and our future could be proposed. I mean, this interpretation, Jim. And my understanding is it got to be was exactly as Mr. Hayden just stated. It. I think there was just simply an oversight of not having a proposal. And you know, I don't know. As long as it doesn't cost us a whole lot of money, change the word. Yeah, you know, change the word. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not upset about that. It's probably the smallest thing we can do this week. You know. Yes, sir. Uh, Mayor, I still like to raise my concerns about demolishing 601 and 603 North Illinois. Um, you know, the one house, 603, was built in the 1850s, and um, clearly you drive on North Illinois and there's no, you won't see any historical house like that. This is one of the only houses that's still on North Illinois. The way, way I think it could be solved is that the city has some funds to the tip to try to move the buildings back about 15, 20 feet physically. And I think we'd be able to preserve a little, couple of pieces of history, including 601. That's a you know significant building there on North Illinois. And I think it shows character to uh, our town when you drive in from Swansea, etc. That's all. Okay. That means that we went through about a two and a half, three yard deal with the state historic preservation. This is after all their review and study and inquiry, this was their recommendation that they agreed that those buildings could and, and should be uh, proceeded with to, to allow our project to still go and that they have no heartburn over those two buildings. Believe me, we went through a long ordeal with historic preservation at the state level. 
So, um, like I said, I, I think that at this point in time, I think we've, we've delivered over this, deliberated over this long and hard for literally years. And I think we finally got an action plan that we don't lose this money. Uh, we got about as many extensions from the state and the federal government on this money. And, and we got a chance to improve Illinois Street. The sidewalks are crumbling up and down there. The intersection at F Street definitely needs some widening and some work for safety reasons. And I think we got a chance to move forward. And, and the state of Illinois' historic preservation has, has taken this up one side and down the other. And I, I think with what we have is what we have. And I think that, you know, we, we have to have this, if not the program, the, the, the project as we've amended it, and it's already cost us a lot of money to amend it, um, it is modified from its original intent, but, but it's still doable, it still serves a purpose, it still improves safety, and I, I think it's virtually impossible to accomplish that if we, uh, and to move those buildings, you're talking about some large chunks of dollars. This project is already right now, with the, with the, uh, with the delays, with the increase of redraft, redrawing it, uh, we're already going to be, as we stated, going to be probably, you know, near, at, or over budget to get it finished, but it's still a worthwhile project, we believe. Anybody else this evening? Okay, so, let me go back. This is Fields. Motor Fuel. We have a uh, Motor Fuel claim to amount of cents. What's your pleasure? Alderman Seibert moves to pay the claim. Second, Second by Alderman Heisler. Do we have any discussion about motor fuel? Roll call. Heisler. Aye. Silva. Aye. Meyer. Aye. Hope. Aye. Anderson. Aye. Rudgewitz. Aye. Carpenter. Aye. Hart. Aye. Silsby. Aye. Aye. Cyber. Aye. Martinson. Aye. 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 Musgrove. Aye. Harlow. Aye. Motion carries. This time, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to ask you, I'd like for a motion, first of all, to go to executive session. Uh, the, the primary purpose tonight is to talk about uh, um, contract negotiations. Uh, so, uh, is this going to make a motion? Okay. Motion to go to executive session. Here's the second. Motion by Alderman Meyer, second by Alderman Heisler. Any discussion? All in favor of going into executive session, signify by saying aye. Aye. All in favor, motion carries. Uh, ladies, we're back in open session. We can, now we're back in open session. The reporter is at this time, I would ask if anyone from the council is uh, uh, willing to make a motion to approve the Local 50 Clerical Unions contract as proposed and explained uh, to the council. Um, willing to make that? I'm sorry, first of all, motion? No, Your Honor. Motion by Alderman Seibert. Do I hear a second? Second. Second by Alderman Meyer. Do you have a question, Alderman? No, I was going to say. Okay, I'm sorry. I thought maybe I had a question. We had to get, I would want to get the, uh, the topic on the floor first of all before we have questions. Yeah, yeah and, and I think it's fair to say, Jim, that the, the clerical union has, waiting for our decision here, has approved the contract on their behalf. And, and as we went over and uh, for the public, we, uh, I guess it's fair to say, Mr. Snyder, and this is a synopsis, this would primarily came down to a few adjustments in, uh, uh, a few adjustments in the contract, but primarily it was the wage of, if, if, you want, if you want to just give a synopsis of it quickly for the, for the public. The wage thing was um, a couple of adjustments in, in management rights in terms of the length of probation and stuff like that. And it's certainly available for anybody who has any questions uh, uh, after, after the meeting. We certainly can. <laughs> Council, you had explanations. You answered many questions in the executive session. Are there any other questions? We have a motion. We have a second to approve the uh, Local 50 Teamster Girls contract uh, for the secretaries, which, as somebody asked me tonight before the meeting, that basically is all the secretarial people except for the police side of things, right, Jim? Yeah, they're the telecommunicators. Right, right. That's the only that's the only department that is not fall under this clerical union. Motion is second. I'll call for a roll call vote. Heisler. Aye. Kinsella. Aye. Meyer. Aye. Holt. Aye. Anderson. Aye. Rudgewitz. Aye. Carpenter. Aye. Hart. Aye. Selsby. Aye. Payne. Aye. Cyber. Aye. Markinson. Aye. Schneider. Aye. Mustro. Aye. Arlen. Aye. Motion carries. Motion to adjourn. Motion for Alderman Meyer, second for Alderman Anderson. All in favor of adjourn, signify by saying aye. Aye. Motion carries.